At my old house, we had a family of white-tailed deer living near our deck. White-tailed deer live lots of places, including most of the U.S. and South America, and parts of Canada. The blue crown lorikeet is a kind of parrot that's found only in the tropics. It's a good thing we're here this time of the year, because in the winter, the Perula warbler wouldn't be here. It migrates to the tropical forests in South and Central America. That's a muskrat, and it's related to a beaver. It even builds its lodge out of sticks and leaves in the swamp, just like a beaver does. This is the report I did on insects. If you want to find out about the world of insects, click on a picture. What is an insect? Some crawl, some fly, but all have antennae and six legs. So what are they? Insects. Creepy, crawly, camouflaging insects. Some insects, like this dung beetle, are huge. Some are so tiny, you need a microscope to see them. The one fact that bugs me about insects is, there are more insects in the world than any other animal family. Butterflies. People like me who don't like bugs make an exception for butterflies. This monarch butterfly is still wrapped up in its pupa stage, waiting to come out. It has spent weeks and weeks metamorphosing from a caterpillar. To metamorphose means to change. And here it comes, a butterfly breaking out of its cocoon. Just another few seconds and it's a colorful monarch butterfly. And why are butterflies colorful? The colors help them to attract a mate and they also let predators know that they taste awful. And who would have thought something so pretty could taste so bad? Dragonflies. Dragonflies begin their life in the water, and they are awesome predators. When they're young, they can shoot out their jaw with lightning speed and catch other insects, or even tiny fish with their clawed lip. Talk about bug-eyed, or compound bug-eyed, that is. Compound eyes are actually made up of hundreds of tiny eyes that help the dragonfly see movement in all directions at the same time. That way, when they're flying, they can easily spot other bugs they want to turn into breakfast. Then zap! Dragonflies have been on this earth for millions of years. This fossil could even be as much as 300 million years old. At that time, way before the dinosaurs, some dragonflies had wingspans of up to three feet wide. Now that's what I call a big bug. <laughs> Welcome to the Bone Zone. Call me Bones, Sherlock Bones. <laughs> I see you've discovered a pile of bones. We've got to figure out who they belong to, or belonged to, I should say. <laughs> you need to finish putting this animal's skeleton together. So, have at it. <laughs> Bone voyage. <laughs> Bones about it. That's a turtle. You get the Sherlock Bones tail wag of approval. Case closed. That duck doesn't look real. Are you sure it doesn't have a wind-up key? Not unless it's a wind-up, ruddy duck. They look like toys, but they're real all right. That's a channel catfish. Some people like it deep fried with tartar sauce, but in the swamp where it's alive and swimming, it hunts at night for worms, crayfish, and small fish. Alligators are giant reptiles that spend a lot of time lying along riverbanks in the sun so they can keep themselves warm. Fortunately for their prey, they can't move very fast when they're on the land. Thank goodness for small favors. The chorus frog is a tree frog, and they're the first frogs in the swamp to stop hibernating. Help Arnold gobble up those delicious flies by moving him around the pond. All you have to do is click where you want him to go. 
but watch out for those hungry, snapping turtles. They just love to have him for lunch. If Arnold really gets in trouble, you can click on one of the lily pads and he'll hop up there. But be careful. He can't stay there for too long. Need help? Click on the question mark. Good luck. Oh, great. I knew I should have stayed home today. Help Arnold gobble up those delicious flies. Here goes nothing. Here I go again. Now picture this. Toads can lay up to 8,000 eggs. When the tadpoles hatch, schools of them stick together in the water, and it looks like the swamp's filled with black ink. Time to take chances and get creative with our eco posters. There are lots of stickers to choose from. Want to add some animals from the habitats to the mix? Here's a hint. Every time you click on an animal out in the wild, you'll earn a sticker of that animal here in your book. Have fun! Want some animals to put in your habitat? First, you have to go back into the wild and find some. Click on an animal out there, and it shows up in here. Let me tell you so you're in the know. Use that tool to make the stickers grow. Use that tool. Have a bowl. It'll make the sticker small. Cricket frogs are a kind of tree frog, according to my research. They get their name because they sound like a chirping cricket. I bet that snapping turtle has some sharp teeth. The snapping turtle, like all turtles, doesn't have any teeth at all. But its beak is sharp enough to bite through a human hand. At least if you're going to be a frog, Arnold, you're an American bullfrog. They're the biggest frog in the swamp. Eight inches long? You think that's big? Maybe it's not much if you're a kid, but if you're a bullfrog, it makes you big frog on campus. It's a bubble fro frog, a spring peeper. Whenever it makes its call, its throat puffs up like a big balloon. How does a cope's tree frog cope with being potential breakfast for other swamp animals? It's the chameleon of the swamp and can change colors from brown to gray to green faster than you can say ribbit. What kind of bird was that? It wasn't a bird, Phoebe. It was one of my cousins, a gray tree frog. I'm in love with a big bullfrog. A big bullfrog, that's me. Ribbit, ribbit. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Make no bones about it. There's more to the world than meets the eye. Use these x-ray glasses to examine some of the skeletons that lie beneath mere feathers, scales, or fur. 